Hello, I'm Rob McGay with Universal Audio, and I'm down in Nashville, Tennessee today with uh, famed songwriter Mark Colley. Good to have you. Thanks for inviting us in. Uh, Mark has made a career out of songwriting, has written a number of hits, uh, has also worked as a songwriting coach uh, with a number of uh, up-and-coming songwriters, as well as done clinics around the world you know, on the topic of songwriting, as well as he's written two books. So we could say he's a bit of a, an expert on the topic of songwriting. <laughs> or busy, anyway. Busy, all right. <laughs> Mark uses Universal Audio gear as part of his process, so I thought it'd be nice to come down and have you kind of explain how you use Universal Audio, the lunar recording system, yeah. in your process from taking songs from idea to uh, high quality demos. Yeah. Well, you know, when you and I first started talking, it was sort of, uh, I'd mentioned to you, I always had home studios and uh, kind of got away from it. I found I was reading more manuals than I was writing songs for yeah. a period. So I, I kind of changed gear and um, gears literally, <laughs> and got rid of a lot of the home studio stuff in favor of just paying attention to writing. And I got into writing the first book and coaching, uh, but I found myself missing it, and I wanted to get back into uh, some form of home recording. And it's just gotten better and better and smaller and smaller, and you know it's just great. Um, so I talked. I was talking to my friend Bob Britt, who you'll meet today. Bob's great, and he said, "Hey, have you uh, heard of Luna?" And I had not. So we both you know, Googled it and started looking at it. And I said, this looks like I w what I would want to do. It felt more analog, warmth. And it just seemed like a really good start over kind of idea. The first thing was the Apollo uh, for me, which is great. And I soon got greedy and needed more DSP and got a satellite <laughs> pretty quick. <laughs> so I thought, oh, this will last forever. Right. And it was so great, I just I wanted more. So um, fired that up. And uh, my process, I'm not the biggest gearhead and not the most technical guy in the world. I, I use equipment as a means to an end, a you know, means to an end, basically. So it was easy to fire up uh, some of the plugins. I usually start with uh, acoustic guitar I'm the most comfortable with. And uh, the bold move I made with you is I said, I'll just write a song without having a song <laughs> and, you know, we'll do this process and show how I'm using it. And luckily, I've written a couple. Uh, the first one was using uh, Ravel Light, the piano, um, which was gorgeous, really cool. This one that we're going to talk about was more my, my thing, probably more Americana rock, start with guitar again. Mm -hmm. um, I played with the drums in it, which I liked as well, too, in the shape um, function, but I like drum loops as well. The metronome works well. In this case, I grabbed a Simon Phillips drum loop, and it was easy to import. Just put that in and uh, mic'd up the acoustic and went to it. And it immediately sounded good. And for me, if it sounds good, that's inspiring. That, that's the first step of, of the transition from the idea of the song to recording it. So the beginning of the process for me is uh, simplicity. So threw up a mic, an acoustic guitar. It's the way I like to start. There's a drum loop down. We used a, a UA610 preamp, which is really warm, like a, from the 50s era. And uh, went to a preset. I love presets uh, because, again, they make the job easier. They sound so good. Uh, rather than dialing it up all day and slowing the creative process down, grab a preset and I'm off and running. That's cool. So now what typically comes next in your process? Bass for me. I uh, started as a bass player and I uh, love to get some bottom end on something to keep it exciting. So on to bass and I'm pulling out a Hofner, which is, I'm really getting old school here, uh, flat wound strings. And uh, I'm using an SVT in the unison slot, an Ampeg SVT, which I used to have. So this is just, it's awesome. It's taking me back. Um, and the, the plugins, again, just went for a simple one and it's so good. I can get directly from you know, inspiration to getting this down. Uh, I like to do the Paul McCartney trick, which I wouldn't do at the moment, but that is to like get everything on there, including vocal, go back in and do, redo bass. So at some point, this is my guide bass, but at some point I will go back in and redo the bass. Okay, Mark, I see you're getting ready to, to do a vocal take. Yeah. Um, yeah, I see you got a Neve 1084 preamp into an LA-2A. That's a classic uh, vocal chain. Sounds great. Uh, tell us about your process. Well, we're at scratch vocal time. Um, 
for this idea, this is an unusual beast, this song, because I wrote the lyric the day before I started working on the music and completed it. Normally, a uh, scratch vocal would really sound like, you know, scat singing or something. I wouldn't put it on, this, on a track with anything else, so I still have the ability to keep changing that vocal, changing the lyric, everything about it. This was unusual in that I had the lyrics, so I went ahead and set up a track where I could sing the real lyric, and I was pretty settled on the melody in this case, too. So mm -hmm. this was more of a, you know, if I had to call it a polished scratch vocal, that's what I did. Show me grace when I did not deserve it. Show me love when I did not earn it. Okay, so certainly we've got a song coming together now. Yeah. So, so what's next? Uh, I think it's at the arranging stage. You know, at that point as a songwriter, you think, is this a full-blown demo? Is it an acoustic demo? Where am I going? This one I wanted a full-on Mike Campbell, Keith Richards, guitar army. Mm -hmm. uh, and luckily, one of my best friends is Bob Britt, who plays with Bob Dylan, and he's coming off a Grammy win with Delbert McClinton this year. Bob is just phenomenal. So the call goes to Bob, and he and I usually talk through it and go, you know, what are you thinking? And I'm thinking this. And uh, so on to Bob here. Welcome, Bob. Thanks for, for coming by. Appreciate Thanks for that. having me. Yeah, no, it's great. So uh, Mark sent you these tracks. He did. Brought you in. You're the, the, the guitar player. Mm -hmm. So tell us a bit about the pro your process to help building out this demo. Well, the first thing I did on this track was add a couple of acoustic guitars. I, I did, well, actually four tracks of acoustic, but two tracks of D28 right. Martin and two tracks of J200 Gibson. Okay, and, cool. And uh, I spread them wide and it just creates a big bed. All right, cool, let's take a listen. Yeah. All right, cool, so, so what came next in the process? Next was uh, the rhythm electric guitars, uh, and I played a Telecaster and played it through the 55 Deluxe plug-in yeah. in the unison slot and I open tune because he wanted like a Keith Richards right. thing so I did open tune capo with an A position and then, then an open E the yeah. songs in E and uh, again spread them not really hard left and right and in this kind of song uh, you just keep them dry I don't put right anything on them straight up guitar yeah, straight up guitars rock guitar <laughs> So I love the solo you played on this. Tell me a little bit about, about how that came together. Oh, thanks. Uh, well, there was a spot for a solo, so I played a solo. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. And uh, I used the stock Marshall that comes uh, with, everybody gets it, right. and it sounds great. And uh, so I played this solo, and then uh, after listening to it, I thought, well, I need a little something to lead into it. So then I played these, I played four slide guitars just doing a swell up okay. and that brings you into the solo and then during the build before the solo I thought well there needs to be something in there so I played a little ascending double stop line that okay. brings you into the whole solo yeah, let's check it out yeah So what's next? At this point, uh, Mark and I decided that it should have real drums on it. So I sent it to Tommy Harden. He's a mm -hmm. fabulous drummer here in town, A-list guy. He's played with our band from Alabama to Reba. And tons of records look him up. And uh, sent him the tracks. He sent me back amazing drum tracks. And that's cool. what you hear. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. Well, I think we've got a little video of Tommy yeah. playing those tracks. Yeah. Yeah. Let's have a look. Show me grace. 
Okay, so now vocals? Vocals, yeah, I sent a mix. I put Tommy's drums in the mix, got a decent mix, sent it to Mark. He sang his vocal right. here, okay. and then uh, sent it back to me. Yep. I put it in my system. My wife and I added some background vocals at the very end. Before you, just an empty sky Where all my dreams just went to die But you saw something no one else could see All right, so now we're at the mix stage. Tell me about your, your process for that. Well, I just uh, throw everything up. I get the band pretty much leveled out, right. get the vocals in. I, I like to throw everything think through the Studer. Uh, tape? tape yeah. The tape on all the channels. Uh, right. And then on the mix buses and, and all the individual, but like I'll do a drum bus, I'll do an mm -hmm. electric guitar bus, I'll do acoustic guitar bus, mm -hmm. a bus for pretty much everything and put the Neve summing on that. Okay, right. And, and between those two, it just gets you there. It's like yeah. a nice gooey stew, you know, <laughs> that it, it, it just this well, a warm blanket, so to speak. Okay. It kind of, that, that's what it does. So that's that a big you, chunk of it right yeah, there. Yeah, that gets you most of the way there. Okay. Uh, one, another thing I like to do is uh, the drums, the Ocean Way plug-in okay. for the rooms. Uh, it, it's astounding how real it is right and, you know that and capital chamber for vocals is you know frank sinatra you're there. <laughs> you can't go wrong with that <laughs> yeah. yeah uh and uh on a of lead vocals i like to i like to use 1176 and if there was if i only had one compressor yeah it'd be the 1176 okay which it's, flavor which one it depends on what it is, right? But like for the vocal on this kind of track, I use the blue stripe, which right. is the A. Mm -hmm. And there's a trick that I learned years ago. You engage all of the buttons, a very s slow attack, fast release, mm -hmm. and you just you slam it. Yeah. I mean, the needle is on gain reduction is buried to 20, 20 dB. Yeah. Uh, but when you hear it, you. You wouldn't you wouldn't think there was compression on it. Just it just brings forward, it right yeah. up in your face, and it adds this amazing tonal quality. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't know how it does it, but it it does it. Sounds it? And good. It's a great trick. Yeah, that's good. That's I also good. like that's to good. run the vocal through a 1073 or a 1084. Okay. Um, even if it doesn't need EQ, oh. it, again running through the virtual transformers that are yeah. modeled in there. It just, just right. adds a little something, you yeah. know? Yeah. And uh, that's, that's cool. A, that's about it for Anything on that. the main bus? On the mixed bus? Yeah. Uh, I'll, again, I'll run it through uh, a, one of the Neves, just yeah. turned off. Okay. Nothing engaged. Right. Uh, then I'll run it through probably the API 2500 mixed okay. bus compressor. Yep. Uh, which I love. I love the Oxford stuff, the in inflator and limiter at the end, right. and the Ampex ATR 102 is amazing. Okay, that's your mix. That's down just yeah. like, that's it. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Well, this this thing sounds really fantastic. Yeah. Oh, okay. thanks. Showed me grace when I did not deserve it. Showed me love when I did not. Okay, cool. So, you know, any final thoughts? Yeah, it has been, I mean, in every way awesome. It, it did exactly what I was hoping it was, would do, which is to inspire. At the end of the day, uh, I'm not the biggest gearhead, as I've mentioned. I, I want to get right at this stuff and have it sounding good. The presets are awesome. The warmth of everything is wonderful. The usability, terrific. Uh, you know, even the company, um, the follow-up and everything has, has been terrific. Every, everything about this experience really honestly has been great. I'm writing songs with it, which I was not writing for a while. And my my dream was that this would inspire me to write some songs. And two of them have come out immediately, and I'm still at it. So I couldn't be happier. Well, that's awesome. I mean, you've got a MacBook Pro, an Apollo Twin, 
some instruments and a microphone yeah. and, and, and you're writing, making demos. That's it. And they'll sound like a record in the end. <laughs> but even if they didn't, you know, just the, the process of, of the organic process of like an acoustic song, anything, uh, is really doable for anybody. The, the, the presets and the, the usability, again, so easy and so good. You know, I, I couldn't be more pleased with it. Cool. Well, let's, let's just now take a listen to the, the finished song, The Best in Me, by yeah. Mark Colley. Thank you. 